Hello, everybody, and welcome to my uh, live stream of my Financial Friday Live. Appreciate y'all joining me today. Uh, it is 12 noon straight up Pacific time, and I am joining you from my brand new studio. Okay, actually, it is a studio, uh, kind of. Uh, so in the basement of my house, I now have a green screen behind me, so we don't have that fuzzy stuff that you've seen around my face every time that I've been on here. I've got some lights, so I am kind of professional here. Uh, I might even get one of those cool little microphones that comes down from the top right here so I look like a real YouTuber instead of wearing this fuzzy, head, funky headset. Anyway, I'm not sure if I might go that far. But super excited to have you here. Uh, Financial Friday, uh, if I stumble at all, if I run into some technical difficulties, blame it on my new setup because I am trying trying to figure out this setup, but um, I definitely think that, um, you know, this whole internet thing's going to catch on. And I think maybe this video thing and, and doing live broadcasts and putting information out there on video, secret, I think it's going to be kind of a big deal. Well, maybe that was figured out a few years ago and I'm just now finally getting on board. But the bottom line is, here I am, and I'm diving in feet first and, uh, and investing a little bit to make higher quality videos and really deliver strong information to you guys. So, <coughs> excuse me. So thank you for joining me. Um, today is Financial Friday. As a reminder, what is Financial Friday? It's any number of things. So Financial Friday is really my way to speak to my clients. And I may be talking about different topics. Um, you know, today I'm talking about a loan topic. I'm talking about what's going on with <clears throat> down payment assistance, how to buy a home without having a significant amount of money out of pocket. And I'm going to talk about other topics. I've got a lot of topics on my library that I've talked about. So you can go to my YouTube channel and check it out and you'll see all of the topics that I've talked about. I've been doing this for, I don't know, I think I'm going on about two months now and I plan on doing it forever. So if you have ideas of topics that you would like me to talk about, um, maybe it's things about estate planning, maybe that's something important to you. I would love to hear from you what it is that you wanna make sure that I cover <clears throat> during these Financial Fridays. So continue joining me every single Friday, 12 noon, I'll be broadcasting live. If you join live, you get the, the prize of being able to comment and I can bring up those comments and talk to you and interact with you a little bit. So I'd love to know, I've got about seven or eight people watching on, on all the different platforms. By the way, I'm on five, different um, live streams Facebook page. I'm live on LinkedIn, I'm live on YouTube, and I'm live on Twitter. Super excited to be live on Twitter. Anyway, so you might see only one or two people on your stream, but there are five different streams that I am streaming to. Today, our topic is down payment assistance and how to buy a home with down payment assistance. <clears throat> and this is a topic that I am passionate about. And I think that there's a lot of misunderstandings about how down payment assistance works. I think there's a lot of misunderstandings about, hey, do I need to wait to buy a home until I have my own money for a down payment? And that is really what I want to focus on today is an understanding of what is down payment assistance? How does it work? And is it the right thing for me to take advantage of down payment assistance? And one of the questions I really want to discuss is, hey, does it make sense for me to take advantage of down payment assistance even if I have my own money for a down payment? So that's something really important that I want to address is whether you should or shouldn't use this and under what circumstances that you should or shouldn't use it. So I want to start with, uh, as always, just kind of going through and giving you an education and understanding of how all this fits together. So the first thing I want to talk about is what does it really cost to buy a home? What is it? John, you say I need to have down payment, but I heard that, you know, I can get an FHA loan with three and a half percent down. So if I'm buying a $500,000 home, then I'm needing about $17,000 as my down payment. Seven, yeah, $17,500. Um, <clears throat> so is that correct? Well, it is, but you forgot about closing costs and closing costs are super, super important. So before we get into how to use down payment assistance to pay for your down payment, we've got to understand really, it's not just down payment. It's total out of pocket between your down payment and your closing costs. And so we've got to figure out, well, what does that look like? So let's go ahead and take a look now and get an idea of what does it really cost to buy a home? <clears throat> what we see right now is I've got four different loan options there. I've got the zero down options. <clears throat> That's gonna be your VA loan, your USDA loan. There is no down payment required for those programs. Your next level down is your FHA. Now, a lot of people say, oh my gosh, FHA, that's only for first-time home buyers. Not true. FHA is for anybody. You don't have to be a first-time home buyer. You just can only have one FHA loan at a time. 
So if you are uh, looking to buy a home, whether you're a first time home buyer or not, <clears throat> you can use FHA and put as little as three and a half percent down payment. Conventional actually has a smaller down payment than FHA. Now, conventional is essentially Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, two different quasi-government companies. They're kind of controlled by the federal government, but they're private companies. Go figure. Anyway, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac set the rules. I like to say they're like the Coke and the Pepsi of the mortgage world. And really, you go to a restaurant and you say, hey, can I have a Coke? Uh, I'm sorry, sir, we only have Pepsi. Whatever. Hey, can I have a Pepsi? Uh, we only have Coke. Whatever. It's basically the same thing. You just have a preference. For you, <clears throat> Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, you shouldn't care. You don't care which is which. So if you get a conventional loan, it might be a Fannie Mae loan. It might be a Freddie Mac loan. That's up to me to help decide what is the right recipe to use to get you the best possible loan program and get you the best possible approval. Interest rates are pretty much the same between Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Fannie Mae and conventional loans, Fannie and Freddie, only require 3% down. And most people misunderstand that. Most people think that, hey, John, um, I, want, I want a small down payment. FHA is my best option. No, not really. As a matter of fact, conventional is a smaller down payment required at 3% down. <clears throat> the difference is a conventional loan is super sensitive to the combination of your credit score and the fact that you have a small down payment. So if you have amazing credit, conventional is likely the way to go. If you don't have amazing credit, conventional is likely not the way to go. So that's super important to understand when we're looking at this. The other thing is conventional requires that you're a first time home buyer if you're putting 3% down. If you're able to put 5% down, then conventional says, I don't care if you're a first time home buyer or not. But here's the most important thing. <clears throat> the most important thing is that closing cost column. When you are purchasing a home, you have to have between 10 and $15,000 out of pocket for closing costs. So that's looking at whether you're doing an FHA loan, whether you're doing a conventional loan, whether you're doing USDA or VA, 10 or $15,000 is what you have to have out of pocket. And that's the piece that people misunderstand. <clears throat> Excuse me, by the way, I've got a frog in my throat, so I'm gonna have a little sip of water here. All right, hopefully that froggy is gone. All right, so 10 or $15,000 is typically what you need for your closing costs. So when you say, hey, I wanna buy a $500,000 loan for conventional 3% down, I need 15,000 for down payment, but I need another 10 to 15,000 for closing costs. That says you need to come up with 25 to $30,000 out of pocket. Okay, that's super important to understand. You can refer back to this slide for any questions that you have. This will be recorded, posted on my YouTube channel. By the way, please like and subscri uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the little notification bar to get notifications when I go live or when I do any <clears throat> other um, videos. I do multiple videos throughout the week about lots and lots of different topics. You will love them. Okay, so let's dive into really what the next step is, which is, hey, John, okay, I, I don't have that kind of money to come up with. And I need to know what are my alternatives? How much can, where else can I get my money from <clears throat> when I am looking to use, to buy a home. I don't have $30,000. Is down payment assistance my only choice? So let's go ahead and dive into that. And here we go. There are really seven different things I want to talk about when we talk about alternatives to your own cash out of pocket for down payment and closing costs. The first alternative is a gift from family. The bank of mom and dad to me is the absolute best source of down payments from a fiscal perspective. But oftentimes the bank of mom and dad has a super expensive emotional cost. They're gonna, you're gonna feel indebted to them. They're gonna feel like, hey, you can't do that with that home because I helped you pay your down payment. <clears throat> there are times when that, even if it is an option financially, may not be an option emotionally, but if you can make it work for you and your family, having a gift for down payment from your family is a really, really good option to not have to use money for down payment from a down payment assistance program. So that's one scenario. A couple other scenarios, you can sell something. You have an asset. Now the hard part is when you sell something, I have to prove that you own it. 
I have to prove what it's worth and I have to prove that you sold it and how they paid you. So don't misunderstand. If you own a car and it's paid off or it's an antique car, I don't care if you own a, 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 a collection of pet rocks that happens to be worth a bunch of money. I have to be able to prove that you own it. So a car is easy. I got a copy of the title. But if you have a collection of pet rocks, how do I prove ownership other than, hey, here's a selfie of me with my collection of pet rocks? That's going to be a little harder. We have to prove the value. Again, car, I can get a Kelly Blue Book to prove the value. The biggest flaw that somebody has when they sell something is the receipt of the money from the buyer they often get in cash. That is a no-no because I cannot prove where that cash came from. So if you have a situation where you are trying to sell something to come up with your down payments, that's a great idea, <clears throat> but you've got to prove where the cash came from. So it can't be, let me rephrase that, you have to prove where the money came from, and so it can't be cash. It's got to be a money order that we can show who it came from. It's got to be a cashier's check, or it's got to be you know, electronic transfer of some type. So I can see that on the bill of sale, Bob Smith bought it from you, and I can see that Bob Smith paid you for that for that car or for that boat. Okay. The next area as an alternative is a 401k withdrawal. And down below, you'll see I also set a 401k loan. The truth is home ownership is an amazing investment and it is uh, rivaling 401k and how well you can grow your money. 401k is amazing because you get to get matched money by your employer. The money is contributed pre-tax. The problem is it doesn't have the benefit of leverage. A home <clears throat> has a benefit of leverage that says, hey, if I put $30,000 into a home, I own a $500,000 home. And if that $500,000 home goes up by 10%, I've earned $50,000. Even though I only invested 30, I returned 50. Versus if you take that same $30,000 and put it in a 401k, you could theoretically, between tax savings and employer matching and growth, <clears throat> you could theoretically get you know, a 25% gain. But that means that your $30,000 only grows by 25% or $7,500. You're not seeing the benefit of leverage. So I am worried about tax consequences, and I want you to be too. <clears throat> but sometimes a, a withdrawal from your 401k or a loan from your 401k is a better option to come up with a down payment than to use down payment assistance programs. Another alternative is a seller credit. Just be aware the seller cannot pay your down payments. The seller can pay your closing costs up to a certain percentage depending upon loan type. In a lot of cases, they can pay all the closing costs, but they can't pay the down payments. So your down payment needs to come from you or one of these other sources. One of the cool things that we can do is something called a wedding registry. A wedding registry is essentially the ability to use multiple small gifts from people if you have an event. So it could, it's called a wedding registry, but the truth is it might be, hey, I've got, um, I don't know, a, a big birthday and I, I, I'm turning 30 years old and uh, I've asked everybody in my family to give me gifts of money to put towards my down payment of my home. And we have to document it all properly, but we can use all of that money accumulated together. Think of it like your own little GoFundMe account for your mortgage and for your down payment. So that's an option that we can look at. And I want you to consider that as an alternative to doing down payment assistance. But down payment assistance is the final option. And I think down payment assistance is a great scenario for us to proceed with if in fact it makes the most sense. So I want to start now with talking about, like, John, what is down payment assistance? So let me be clear. Down payment assistance is money that is provided from some entity, whether it be the state of California, whether it be the local government. What you have is you have a entity that has come together to say, we want to promote home ownership. Now, sometimes, most of the time, they're through a nonprofit organization, but they can't lose money. So the problem is they're giving you a grant or they're giving you a loan for a down payment, but they have to fund that from somewhere. So they're not trying to make money, but they have to figure out where they're getting that money from. And the truth is they're getting it from you. They're getting it from you paying a higher interest rate, you paying higher fees, um, but essentially, I'll cover all that in a couple minutes, essentially what down payment assistance is in a nutshell is you having some 
entity helping you pay for your down payment and pay for your closing costs. The question is, how do you pay them back? And how much extra does it cost you over the life of the loan to determine whether it was worth it? Okay. So why does down payment assistance exist? That's really simple. The biggest hurdle to people becoming homeowners is coming up with the cash to get in. It isn't making the monthly payment. Even with interest rates on the rise like they are right now, the fact is, is that people have to pay rent. Rent continues to go up. And that is the biggest concern I have is people saying, I'm going to wait to buy a home until I have my own down payment. Well, that's all fine and good, except what are you going to do in the meantime? You're going to pay rent. And that rent is going up. So down payment assistance exists to overcome that barrier, that hurdle that says, I've got good credit. I've got good enough income that I can make this monthly payment, but I can't come up with the down payment. I can't get ahead enough because every time I save a little bit of money, then my car breaks down and something happens. I need to spend that money on something else. So just understand this is speaking to a lot of you that are waiting to buy a home that have said, you know what, I just can't do it because I can't come up with the money out of pocket. But I will guarantee you that your rent is continuing to go up and guys, I'm going to hear somebody say, John, what about interest rates? Like interest rates are super high. Guess what? The interest on rent is 100%. You are paying 100% of your money is going towards interest because it is going towards the seller's uh, pocket. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. I got to fix something here real quick. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm having a technical difficulty. Give me 10 seconds. Okay, so um, bottom line is down payment assistance gets you over that hurdle and that's what I need you to, to be aware of. Um, just the decision really comes down to, should I do it? That is the number one question I get from people when I explain to them how down payment assistance works. As they say, John, should I proceed with this? It's going to cost me more money in interest and or it's going to cost me more in fees. Maybe I should wait. And the simplest answer, by the way, there is no one size fits all answer that doesn't exist. But the simplest answer I'm going to give you today, I'm going to attempt a one size fits all answer, is I'm going to say that when you have no other alternative. Remember, I talked a couple minutes ago about alternatives. When you have no other alternative, then using down payment assistance is better to own a home using down payment assistance than to not own a home at all. If we look at what happened over the last two years, March of 2020, COVID hit, everything froze, and everybody's worried that the housing market was going to crash. It did the exact opposite. We've had a 36% increase in the average home price over the last two years. Now everybody's worried about interest rates going up and saying, oh my gosh, John, rates are so high, housing prices are so high, it's going to crash again. It's not going to crash again. Now, I can't predict the future, but what I'm telling you is I'm a student of my industry and I understand the dynamics that are going on. It's going to be a rough summer. We're going to have a few months where sellers are still going to think that the prices are skyrocketing and buyers are going to think, hey, prices are going to be falling and we're not going to have as many sales and we're going to have houses staying on the market longer and we're going to have sellers that are going to be unrealistic and unwilling to lower their price. And that's going to create some turmoil over the next few months. And then the market's going to settle down and everybody's going to realize that, hey, buyers have to buy because your rent is gonna continue going up. If nobody buys homes, then everybody stays as a renter, which means the landlords have control and they start significantly raising the rents on us. And that's gonna push you to have to buy because then you control your payments. When you buy, you have a fixed payment for the next 30 years. And I wholly expect interest rates to come back down sometime in the next few years. So if you're in a position where you're saying, gosh, John, these rates are super high, the housing prices are super high, I've already explained why I don't think prices are going down, <clears throat> but also you're gonna have the ability to lock in a payment today that I expect you're gonna be able to get a lower payment in the next two to three years because the Federal Reserve has to slow down the economy in order to stop the raging inflation that we have going on right now. But slowing down the economy is the definition of a recession. 
and a recession typically leads to lower interest rates. It does not lead to a crash in housing prices. Even though people remember 2007 to 2009 when we had a recession and housing prices fell. The difference is that recession was because of the mortgage and real estate industry. The recession we're heading into right now, that I expect that we're heading into, is not because of mortgage and real estate. And every other recession did not lead to lower housing prices. So if the only way you can buy a home is to use down payment assistance, I suggest you do it because owning a home is better than not owning a home as long as you plan on staying there for a period of time. If you think you're going to sell in the next two to three years, it might not be a good idea. But if you think you're here for five to 10 years, then it's definitely a good idea over time. It's not about timing the market. It's about time in the market. All right, perfect. Um, so um, at this point, I want to move on here. Again, guys, I told you I was, I'm was i in a new location and I've got a couple of technical difficulties, but I am, I'm gonna power through it, so we're good. All right, downsides of down payment assistance. It's simple. Down payment assistance is not free money. Down payment assistance is funded through you paying typically a higher interest rate on that money, paying higher closing costs when you buy the home, and oftentimes you still have to pay back the money that you borrowed. Now, there are some programs that are grant programs or some programs that are forgivable loans, but the majority of the options, you have to pay back the money over time. And the ones that are grant programs, at least in today's market, are a little bit too good to be true. So that's super, super important. All right, so the last thing before, well, not the last thing, but one of the next thing I wanna talk about, I should say, I wanna be really clear with answering this question. If you have no other alternative except using down payment assistance, you are better off buying the home using down payment assistance instead of waiting because it's like a speeding train going down uh, the, the tracks and you are sitting on the platform trying to get on that train. And that train is not slowing down for you. You need to jump on a train. It may not be your perfect house. It may not be your perfect terms on the loan, but as long as you can afford the payment, you jump on a train that is moving fast, but not as fast as the first train, now you're able to jump onto the other train a little bit easier as it goes by because you're at least on a train moving. And as that train's flying by, you're able to jump from the one train to the other. So hopefully you get my analogy. The point is you need to jump into the market and spend time in the market waiting to buy a home until you have your own down or worse yet, waiting until you have the elusive 20% down is not a good idea in my, in my perspective because you're going to lose appreciation over time. You're gonna lose a tax write-off because when you own a home, you get to deduct the taxes, the interest that you're paying on your taxes and part of your monthly payment goes back into your pocket. Part of the monthly payment goes back into your pocket as increased equity in the home. So if you are in a position where you're saying, hey, maybe I'm gonna wait. Hey, Joe, thanks for the, thanks for the thumbs up, appreciate that. If you are in a position where you're thinking, I should wait until I have 20% down so I don't have to pay mortgage insurance, realize that you're losing more money by not getting the tax write-off and not putting that money in your pocket for paying down your mortgage balance compared to what it's costing you in mortgage insurance. So if you are concerned about that or have questions about that, um, let me know. I will happily go over that with you one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is what's the catch? Like, what is the the deal with down payment assistance, John? Is this a good idea or is it not a good idea? Um, we've talked a lot about this. I've, I've shared with you a little bit about what, what some of the catches are, but I want to be super clear about what those are. The catch with buying a home using down payment assistance, higher interest rates, higher closing costs, the grants that sometimes will take time to be forgiven. We've talked about all of that, but here's the other things that matter it can prevent you from refinancing later if interest rates drop. Now, I just said to you that I think that you can buy now and then you can refinance later as interest rates drop. The problem is if you do certain types of down payment assistance, you've got a second mortgage on the home. And those programs do not allow you to refinance unless you pay off that second mortgage. 
Well, if equity doesn't go up and you're in a position where you have you owe more than what the house is worth in the short term, I think in the long term you'll be fine. But in the short term, in one to three years, as I assume interest rates, as I predict interest rates are going to go down, you're actually potentially going to end up in a position where you can't take advantage of those lower interest rates. Now, don't misunderstand. You still have a fixed interest rate. You still have a fixed monthly payment, but you might be handcuffed a little bit in being able to take advantage of a rate drop until either values go up more or until you're in a position where you've paid down the balance of the mortgage more. There's two more major issues I want to talk about. The first thing is it makes it harder to get your offer accepted. Sellers are um, trying to find the most, the highest price on the house with the highest likelihood that it is going to close escrow. Think about that for a second. You have a home. You're a homeowner. You have a home to sell. You know that you want to get your best price. But what if your best price comes from someone that doesn't have much of a chance to close escrow? They, they don't have a pre-approval letter. You don't know that they even have the proven money for a down payment. And now you're in a position where you're like, well, I'm getting $30,000 more from them. But what if they end up not being able to buy? And now I got to go find somebody else and I end up losing out on the person that was the second best. And now I end up losing even more money. So a seller is ranking their buyers and the realtor is helping them do it. And when you have a small down payment, that puts you low on the totem pole. When you're using down payment assistance, that puts you even lower on the totem pole in the eyes of the seller. Now, that isn't really the case because the truth is you're still coming up with the full amount of money and they're getting their money, whether it comes from you in cash, whether it comes from me in a loan, or whether it comes from down payment assistance. But it's still a uh, a, a, a barrier. It is still something that sellers are considering. Now, as the market starts shifting more, I'm not, we're not even close to a balanced market. It is still very much a seller's market, but I think that it's not as hot of a seller's market as it has been. And I, I actually heard the analogy. I stole it from a local appraiser that, that is uh, a prominent on social media. And he said that the, the housing market right now is like a hot pocket that you took out of the microwave a couple of minutes too early. If you ever done that growing up, I ate Hot Pockets. I'm not afraid to admit it. And when that Hot Pocket's taken out too early, if you ever done that, you're going to have pot spots on the end that are super burning hot. Then you have spots in the middle that are cold. And that's exactly what he's seeing in appraisals and in activity in the market right now. And so some pockets, if you're looking at a super hot neighborhood, you're not likely to get a seller to accept a down payment assistance loan. But if you're in a pocket that isn't a super hot neighborhood, right now and in this summer, in my opinion, <clears throat> is going to be a great opportunity to take advantage of getting an offer accepted while we're in the middle of turmoil. And that's a super important thing to understand. <clears throat> the last thing I'll tell you is volatility. There's a lot of rate volatility right now, and there's something called illiquidity. I'm not going to get too much into illiquidity, but the bottom line is that there's dynamics that I'm actually going to demonstrate in the next 30 minutes as we talk about each of these programs that is going to point out that some of the programs really don't exist right now, even though they do exist. So what do I mean by that? I mean that um, there are, I'll give you a great example of that. FHA says that you can do a loan with as low as a 500 credit score, but no bank is willing to give you a loan with a 500 credit score. FHA is in charge of setting the rules and a bank has to follow the rules that FHA has put out there, but they can be more strict than FHA. So a bank says, you know what? I'm not willing to take that risk down to a 500 credit score. Many of them say, hey, I only want a 680 credit score or a 640. We'll go down to a 580. But the fact is we're allowed to be more restrictive. Well, there's some down payment assistance programs that exist, but they actually either are out of money or the rate structure is such that they cannot... Um, how do I want to say this? The rate structure is such that they there's no way that they can lend money right now because they can't recoup what they've lent. Okay. Hold on one more second, guys. Just one more technical issue. Okay. So um, <clears throat> bottom line is that is a huge challenge right now. And we're going to get into that here in a minute. So you'll be able to see how the programs work and you'll be able to understand um, what what the issues are with illiquidity. Is there such a thing when you are doing down payment assistance of making too much money? 
It's actually kind of a funny thing. The answer is 100% yes. Now, in most cases, when you think about buying a house, if I make more money, that's a good thing, right, John? Yeah, that's absolutely a good thing. But with down payment assistance, it can be a challenge. Here's why. Many down payment assistance programs have such limited funds that they are focused on helping people that have the biggest need. Now, if you make a significant amount of money, then in the eyes of these programs, they say you should be able to save for your own down payments. So I'm going to help the people that don't make as much money that can't save for their down payment instead of helping somebody who makes a good amount of money and chooses to spend that money somewhere else and won't save for their own down payments. So every down payment assistance program is different. Some of them have zero income requirements. Some of them have very, very strict income requirements. And we're going to cover some of that as we go forward through the rest of this presentation. Okay, so um, that's something super, super important. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is credit score. So there's, let me back up one step. There's three things that we care about when you're doing a mortgage. And there are only three things I care about. I care about your cash out of pocket for your down payment and your closing costs. Well, we're talking about that already because that's all about down payment assistance. I care about your credits because your credit tells me how well you've paid your bills in the past because it's the best indicator of how well you're going to pay the mortgage in the future. And then I care about your income because if you don't have enough income to pay your bills, then you won't be able to successfully be a homeowner in owning this home. And so with those three things, all of them are exacerbated or bigger issues when it comes to down payment assistance. Obviously, I already talked about the fact of the down payment and where the money is coming from is the purpose of down payment assistance. I talked about income just now and saying that income is important, that it's enough income, but in a lot of cases, it cannot be too much. Credit is the final piece that they have a higher barrier, a higher threshold that says, hey, if you're not coming in with your own down payment, if you don't have a lot of skin in the game, we want to make sure that you at least have a stronger credit score. We're concerned as an industry that if you're weak in three of those areas, or at least two of them, let's say you have no debt money for a down payment and you have poor credit, we're super worried. Yeah, even though you make good income, that's actually a bigger problem. Think about the guy who makes really good income, but he can't save enough money to come up with his own down payment, and he can't even pay all of his bills on time. That's a bigger concern. I actually, I hate to say it, but that's being lazy. Like that's somebody who doesn't care about their credit. And if you don't care about your credit and paying your bills or saving money, we're not gonna loan you money to buy a home. And that's something really important and fundamental that I think people have, have for a long time misunderstood. So the credit score requirements for every program is different, but when you're buying a home using down payment assistance, the credit score is almost always higher than what your credit score requirement would be if you were coming in with your own money for down payment. And that's really the key that I want to talk about. The next thing I wanna make sure you understand is property types. So property types are critical in understanding types of down payment assistance, okay? So property types, oops, I think a lot, there you go. All right, so property types, I'm not gonna go into all of these. I'm just gonna tell you, these. this is what I mean when I say property types. So let's see, I point over here, over here. So this is what I'm talking about, single family, duplex, Put my finger back. Single family, duplex, triplex, fourplex, condo, and manufactured home. Just because you qualify for down payment assistance doesn't mean you can apply it to any one of these property types. So you definitely need to talk to me as we get you approved for down payment assistance to say, hey, John, I want to buy this type of home. Most of the homes are going to be single family homes. But if you want to do anything else below that, we need to double check and confirm, do we in fact have the ability to do down payment assistance with that property type. All right, so we got 26 minutes left. Um, I want to, first of all, I've got about nine or 10 of you on different programs or different um, uh, platforms right now. So I'd love to get a shout out if you're watching this live or if you're watching this recorded, I'd love for you to post in comments real quick what you've learned so far and or what you want to make sure I, you get out of this. So if there's something that, that you haven't seen and you say, John, I wanna make sure I cover that. If you're watching it recorded, I'll go in and I'll comment on it and I'll, I'll give you an answer. Or I'll give you a call and we can connect. If you're watching live, I'm probably gonna answer the question live if you post it. So I'd love for all nine or 10 of you that are watching right now to please give me a shout out. And that way you can tell me what, I, what you like about what I've said so far or what questions you have or both 
I would love it. Don't be shy. All right. So talking about the programs, I'm going to spend the rest of our call not only answering your questions, but I'm going to spend this time talking about these programs. There are seven different down payment assistance programs that I currently offer, and I'm going to go one by one and explain them to you. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of this video and I'm going to chop these up into little mini videos and I'm going to post them on YouTube individually so that you can search for and find the segment just on the Cal HFA Forgivable Equity Builder or the GSFA Platinum Program. So you want to see the whole thing, obviously watch this whole thing and those eight or nine of you that are here right now, you're going to get the whole deal. But everybody else, you'll be able to pick these up in little segments if you need to come back and visit it. You can do that without watching the entire thing. All right, so let's talk about the programs one by one. The first one that I want to talk about is going to be the Cal HFA Equity, Forgivable Equity Builder. This program sounds amazing. It sounds absolutely amazing. I'm going to make that bigger in just a second. But I want to tell you, this program has been featured, it only rolled out two weeks ago. It has been featured in more news articles. I have seen more Facebook and social media posts about this program than anything else in a super long time. And I'll tell you why, because it is absolutely amazing as long as you fit the really small window that works. So here's the deal. It gives you 10%, 10, 10, let's make sure I got lined up here. It gives you 10% of your purchase price. If you're buying a home in the state of California, you can utilize this to get 10% of your purchase price as assistance towards your down payment, you never make a monthly payment on it. You never need to uh, pay any interest on it. And in five years, it's fully forgiven. You never need to pay it back. You're saying, John, sign me up. I'd sign up if I could too. Here's the problem. The problem is that the program requires that you do not exceed 80% of the area median income. So we're looking at Sacramento County is the example that I'm going to use here. Um, and we are looking at um, uh, a maximum income of 80% of the area median. So this, the, by the way, Erica, I see your comment. Uh, let's just give Erica a quick shout out here. So Erica said that she is sitting listening with two first time home buyers and you've learned so much. Thank you, Erica. I appreciate you bringing your buyers in and, and, and showing them this information. I hope this is going to be super, super helpful for them. Okay. <clears throat> so we have a limit of how much you can make because they're focusing on the people that are at the lowest percentage of the average earnings in that community. Sacramento County, which actually is also the same numbers for El Dorado County and for Placer County, has a, a, a area median income, uh, and I don't have the actual 100% number, but the 80% of the area median income so what, like 90, 90 some odd thousand dollars would be the, the median income for Sacramento County. The problem is you can't make that much. You can only make 80% of that. So the most you can make is $72,000 a year as a family. Now that's a decent amount of, of income. I'm not saying that $72,000 is not a lot of money, but here's the problem. The problem is house prices have gone up and so have interest rates. And so currently the challenge is <clears throat> this program right now would be at a 5% interest rate. It's actually a pretty good rate. That on a $400,000 home would be a payment of about 2,900 a month. And 2,900 a month is the most that we can let somebody spend if they make $72,000 a year. And that's assuming they have no other debts. So think about this for a second. <clears throat> you make $73,000, you don't qualify. If you make 50,000, you qualify. The problem is I can't even do a $400,000 home for you because you have to be able to afford the monthly payments. And if you make $50,000 a year, I'm gonna do simple math for you. $50,000 a year is about $4,166 a month. I'll let you spend about 45% of that towards your bills, towards your credit cards, towards your car payments and towards the new house payment. Well, that means that you can spend no more than about $2,000 a month. That sounds great, John. I make $50,000 a year. I want to, $2,000 a month is exactly what I want to spend. But with interest rates and housing prices where they are right now, $2,000 a month is probably something less than $300,000. And that's assuming a single family residence. Because if you're buying a condo, we have to count the condo association numbers in there. 
So it's possible, I'm not telling you it's not possible, but it's not the right program for everybody. And that's the thing that I want you to understand. You're gonna hear things, you're gonna read things online. Everything we read online is true, right? Well, for somebody it's true, but is it true for you? That's really the thing that you need to understand when you're hearing about all these programs. Oh, my friend got something. They got something from Sacramento County. Most county programs are out of funds right now. They have, they, they have not been replenished. Most programs, there's case by case here and there, but the rules are even tighter for those programs than they are for these programs. And so you have, again, limits on how much money you can make and even more restrictive limits on how much of that money you can spend towards your bills. So just be aware when you hear about these programs, if you if I pre-approved you on one program and you said, John, I heard about this other one that's so much better, why didn't you give me that one? Call me and ask me that question. It's likely that either the program I put you on is better or you don't qualify for the other program because maybe that program is better, but you don't qualify for it or they're out of funds and that just really isn't available. Very rarely, I am human, very rarely I missed it. Almost never. Honestly, I'm really good at what I do. I check everything and make sure that we show you all of your options. So it is likely that it just wasn't the right choice for you. All right, so let's keep going through these programs. I want to talk to you now about the CalHFA conventional loan. And CalHFA gets to add something called a zip loan and something called a my home loan. CalHFA is one of my favorite loan programs to help people get approved to purchase a home. It gives you the most available funds to help cover your down payments and most of your closing costs. When you're using down payment assistance, you definitely have higher closing costs. So you need to make sure you have enough money either in your pocket or from the assistance or from a seller credit to cover all of the closing costs. The Cal HFA programs give the most access to funds. The catch is you have to pay it all back. There are other programs that you do not have to pay back the funds. But if you're looking to maximize the amount of assistance you get to minimize the amount of money you need to get out of your own pocket or from a seller credit, the Cal HFA program, there's two versions, but the conventional or FHA program are great ways to help you get down payment assistance and maximize the amount of money you get to minimize the amount of money out of pocket. Here's basically how it works. First of all, right now, as of the time I'm recording this, you have to have at least a 680 credit score. That moves up and down. So the rules tighten, they loosen, it ebbs and it flows. <clears throat> but the way they provide the assistance is you're borrowing 97% of the purchase price through your primary mortgage, through the conventional loan that is underwritten using Fannie Mae's rules. That means on a $500,000 home, they are financing $485,000. I am financing $485,000 through a conventional mortgage. It means you're gonna have mortgage insurance on that. There's options though, with a conventional loan where you can actually buy out of the mortgage insurance. We can charge you a one-time fee and you'll never have mortgage insurance again. Pros and cons to doing that, that'll help guide you through. But the fact is sometimes you can use the assistance money to buy out of the mortgage insurance. So there's ways that we can structure this that make it smarter for you to be flexible. And it gives me options to help you look at different choices. The other thing is with this program, that it layers on one or two additional uh, assistances, or types of assistance, I should say. So the first type of assistance you get with this is called the ZIP loan. Now don't misunderstand, ZIP does mean zero interest, but ZIP loans are not free. A ZIP loan, you are paying a higher interest rate on that $485,000 first mortgage. So how much of a zip loan you get makes a higher interest rate on the 485. For example, you can get a zip loan for 2% and that means 10 grand on a $500,000 home and you'd have a certain increase in interest rate on your first mortgage. If you want the zip loan for 3%, you're gonna have a bigger increase in the interest rate on your first mortgage. So zip does not really mean free, it means you're not charged interest on that loan. Super, super important to understand that. 
that money does need to be repaid. And then the second layer, the third uh, loan, you're gonna get three loans here. The first one is your conventional loan. Your second loan is your zip loan. And then your third loan is what they call their My Home Loan. Currently, the My Home Loan is 3% of your purchase price. So you can get 6% 6, 6 total, 3% from the zip loan and 3% from the My Home. The My Home does accrue interest. So you can, you're can you charged 1% interest on the My Home Loan and you have to pay it back just like the zip loan. But I'll give you a tip. We can use just the My Home and not the zip loan. And let me explain to you how that works. So what you're gonna see right here, let's make this a lot bigger. Perfect. All right. So, oops, I think I goofed up because I I, uh, I cut this off. There's supposed to be a little bit more information on the left side of this. So I apologize. The first one is the rates for the conventional loan. Oh, it is. I'm sorry. Ha! I'm looking at it right there. It's on the left. Sorry. So if you look on the left side right there, uh, you're going to see it says conventional um, loan with uh, Cal HFA. And that is a 5.75% interest rate. So you can get the conventional loan not using a zip. And then you're going to get the my home of 3%. So I'm loaning you 100% of the purchase price of the home. And you get the benefit of the lower interest rate at 5.75. Kind of scary that I'm saying low at 5.75. But gang, interest rates have moved up quite a bit. So we're in a position with inflation right now where interest rates are moving up. And we expect them to continue moving up. So the sooner you can make a purchase happen, the better off you're going to be. The second level says if you do the Cal Plus loan, and that is the conventional first mortgage, and you do the 2% zip. So you're getting 2% upfront or $10,000 on that $500,000 home, but you're paying almost 1% extra in interest per year. Think about that for a second. You pay 1% extra per year for 2% extra money right now. Hey, Kathleen, thanks for joining me. Um, so this is super valuable information to understand. If the only way you can make the purchase happen is by using that zip loan, do it. But if you have the ability to maybe find a way to get some money from a, from a 401k loan or get money from the bank of mom and dad, you are much, much better off. These rates change every single day. This is just today's interest rates. Feel free, by the way, to post a comment. If you have any questions about anything, I will happily answer those questions for you. Let's move on. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is the Cal FHA, USDA, Zip, and My Home. This program uses Cal HFA's money, but the first mortgage is an FHA loan or a USDA loan. The difference is FHA requires 3.5% down and USDA requires none. Hey, John, I'll take that USDA thing all day long because it's no down payment. <clears throat> yeah, the problem is USDA has geographic restrictions. You're probably asking, John, what the heck is USDA having to do with mortgages? Isn't that who stamps my meat to say that my steak was a certain grade? Yes, it is who stamps your meat that says your steak is at a certain grade. But the fact is USDA is created this loan program years ago to serve the workers that work in the farms in middle America, raising those cows on that, those farms and those ranches. And they were underserved and USDA created a program that we get to take advantage of, but it's not in major metropolitan areas. So you got to look at the USDA map and figure out if you're looking to buy in one of those areas and their rules are more strict in a lot of other ways. This down payment assistance program has two layers to it. The first one is the assistance of um, the, the My Home Loan. And that is for USDA 3% or FHA 3.5%. That money has no a 1% interest is charged. You never have to make a monthly payment and it is paid back when you sell, refinance the home or in 30 years when you pay off the primary mortgage, we would refinance this to put it all into a new loan. It's only grown a little bit over that time. It really isn't a big deal. Typically you're not keeping this loan for 30 years and we're refinancing it into a new loan or you're paying it off when you sell the house. And then the third layer being the zip loan the zip loan allows you to get even more money. I love this program because it gives us access to more funds. And FHA is way more flexible than conventional. So the Cal HFA FHA option opens up a lot more doors for people where a conventional loan is more strict and may not actually work. 
And you're allowed to layer these together so that I can get six and a half percent of my purchase price as assistance to purchase the home by doing an FHA loan <clears throat> with the My Home with the 3% zip. But what I want to explain is what is the cost of doing this? So what you're seeing right here, let me make this a little bit bigger. <clears throat> what you're seeing right here is the base FHA loan. So if you did a Cal HFA loan with the My Home only as of today, May the 6th, you're looking at a 5% interest rate on the FHA loan and you make no monthly payments on the 3.5% down. So you got a 5% first mortgage and you have zero payments on the second mortgage. Uh, so it's a great deal. You have 100% financing. You just have to cover your closing costs and closing costs are higher on down payment assistance than regular loans if you come up with your own down payment. So just remember that fact that it is going to be more expensive in closing costs. <clears throat> what we're seeing here though, is we're seeing what happens when you get the zip money so for the first 2% that you get, it, it increases your rate by three quarters of a percent right now. So you're getting 2% today, but you're paying three quarters of a percent per year extra in interest for that privilege. And the extra 1% on top of that is another half a percent extra as well. So to get the six and a half percent assistance, you're paying six and a quarter percent interest. Remember, as long as equity improves, and we see a recession where interest rates come back down, you have the opportunity to refinance. But if we don't see equity improve, we're gonna be stuck because we we borrowed basically 103% of the purchase price of the home. And you can't refinance when you owe 103% of the purchase price of the home. That's the biggest challenge with these programs, especially with the Cal HFA, because there's no forgiveness to them. Let's talk about the GSFA Platinum Program. I love the GSFA Platinum program. It is the same program whether you're doing an FHA, VA, USDA, or Freddie Mac loan. It offers more flexible credit score requirements with just a 640 credit score. And the money is either immediately forgiven as a grant or it is um, forgiven after three years, excuse me, five, no, it's three years. I, I, that's, a, that's a typo. Uh, it's forgiven after three years. So it is a it is a grant or it's forgiven after three years. Forgive my typo. The grant is if you as the home buyer are working in medical field, law enforcement field, fire or education, and there's tiers to this one. So you can choose to get 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, or 5% of the purchase price towards assistance. It's just going to depend on the loan type and the interest rate. The more assistance you get, the higher the rate is going to be. All of that money is forgiven either immediately or after keeping this mortgage for three years. But if you're not in one of those fields, you have to be willing to commit to keep the house for three years to get rid of the entire amount of the assistance money that you're provided. But here's the challenge with this. Make this bigger. The challenge is that the options have become more limited due to a big word I'm gonna throw out there called illiquidity. Illiquidity is happening in the market right now because rates are moving so quickly and the fear from an investor, from Wall Street's perspective, from the bank's perspective, is that, hey, I'm gonna put you into this loan and I'm going to charge you, let's use the example right here of an FHA loan. I'm gonna charge you 5.625, but in a year and a half, rates are gonna fall and you're gonna refinance out. So I'm a little worried about that. So yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you 2% assistance, but the problem is if I, if I wanted to give you more assistance, I would have had to raise the rate even higher. And if I raise the rate higher, you're for sure going to refinance faster and I'm never going to get the extra money back. And that is a current market condition challenge. It's why I'm showing you, for example, back in March, you had the option of, hey, you could get 2% assistance or for about 1% higher, you could get 4% assistance. Well, now 2% assistance is the most that they offer for FHA and they don't even offer anything greater than that right now. This is a challenge as we continue in this crazy market until things settle down, we're gonna to continue to have this kind of volatility and it actually gets worse with other programs. But the fact is, depending upon timing, everything comes back around. 
March of 2020, the market shut down with COVID. We had major problems with the banking world. And back in March of 2020, we literally stopped all down payment assistance programs. Now, don't worry. If you had gotten a down payment assistance loan before that, we're not making you pay it back. We just aren't doing new down payment assistance programs. They literally froze across the nation. Nobody was doing them. And it took about three months for down payment assistance, two months. It was May, June of, last, of two years ago that they finally started coming back. We're actually in a similar environment for different reasons where there's huge volatility. They haven't shut down the programs, but they're curtailing them and creating circumstances where it may not make sense to use that type of down payment assistance right now. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our next option. This is one of our last options, which is the GSFA open door. Guys, please, if, if you're watching live, please make sure that you comment on here anything that you learned, any questions that you have. Uh, I'm going to take a quick minute at the end to answer any questions. Really appreciate everybody live. Appreciate everybody watching recorded. Uh, if you watch recorded, give me the same thing of a comment of what you learned or a question you have, and I'll, I'll respond to those after the fact, because clearly it's not live. Let's talk about the GSFA open door program. The GSFA Open Door Program allows all of the options, FHA, VA, USDA, or Freddie Mac, a conventional loan. It only requires a 640 credit score, and it gives you 5% assistance based upon the loan type. Now, what GSFA does is they split it up into two separate programs, two separate assistance options. The first part of the assistance is a 2% interest-free loan. So you get 2% of the purchase price, is interest-free, and then the rest of the money is a grants. So that's fantastic. You don't pay any interest on any of it at all, and you get part of the money as a grant that is immediately forgiven, and you never, ever, ever have to pay it back. But it isn't as easy as that. Everything comes with a catch. So when we look at the catch on this one, let's go through here real quick, and let me get to that screen. The catch is the interest rates. And this is really hard for you to see. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think this one, actually it looks like these are identical. So I, I goofed up and I put both of them on there. Sorry guys, I was pulling these together this morning um, and I have, these are, these are both the same. Um, here's the reality. You see that this chart is pretty limited. It's pretty sparse because they have basically, what you look down here at the bottom under the government options, government mean, meaning a an FHA loan. There are zero, FHA loan options right now using the Open Door program. Zero FHA options using the Open Door program. So we are in a position where if I had pre-approved you using FHA Open Door, they they can't comfortably get enough in what's called premium. Marking up the interest rate makes a loan more valuable. Except in today's market when rates are so volatile that the value of marking up the interest rate just says, we think you're going to refinance even sooner and we're not willing to put any money out there. So we're in an environment right now where this is a phenomenal program. I've used it a lot, but it just doesn't make sense for today's environment. Here you go. I, I just got it fixed. So here's the May 1st version. Um, so you can see, uh, actually, and it wasn't May 1st, it was March 1st. Gosh, I, you know what, guys, I apologize. It's been a crazy morning. Um, but this was back on March 1st. So this wasn't just five days ago. It didn't change that quickly. It was March 1st. Um, but the bottom line is, you see how many more choices I had? It doesn't even matter that you can see what they are. You can see they're filled in there in the bottom right corner where it shows you there's a lot of choices where I can give you assistance. You just had to pay more in interest to get more assistance. Today, the program still exists. You still have the ability to do a open door program. They just don't have any interest rates that they're offering for FHA loans. And so any approval letters that we've offered, they just plain don't exist. All right, so let's keep going here. Okay, so the next one I wanna talk about is the Mid-America Mortgage Fund. This is actually um, a summit funding program. So this program is a great option where it allows us to do an FHA loan and the down payment comes as a second mortgage on the home. And we're loaning you three and a half percent of the purchase price. It's forgiven after five years. There's no interest charged. It's deferred payments. You don't need to be a first time home buyer, all of this stuff. We're just dealing with issues of lack of availability of funds. 
We're dealing with illiquidity right now that says, I can't charge enough an interest rate to pay for the assistance. And so even this program is fairly limited in, in ability to get funding right now. I hope that makes sense because there's a lot of uh, uh, misunderstandings out there in the market right now on how all of these things work. And I want to make sure that I am the resource for you guys. So we are just about out of time. Uh, Kathleen, you've got a comment. Anybody else who has any comments or questions, please uh, ask them right now. Or if you're watching after the fact, post them or email me. Um, she said, it is the best way to get buyers in the market right now, no matter what option they use. Um, I agree, guys, we are in a market right now where as long as you plan on staying in the home for at least five years, we're going to see some volatility, especially this summer. There, things, are, things are changing and with change, things move quickly and we're seeing significant volatility in the financial markets. We're seeing significant volatility. I see significant volatility in the housing market, but not that houses are going to crash. You might see a couple of homes that somebody has to sell and so they're going to lower the price on their home. But that doesn't mean that prices are crashing. It means you've got little pockets. But the reality is we're going to see a little better opportunity. And I don't want you to get lost in the thinking of, oh, my gosh, this might be the worst time to buy a home because we're at the top. The truth is housing is needed and there is not enough of it. And we have more and more people who are creating households, people who have postponed buying homes for the last 10 years after they graduated college because they didn't want to be an adult. They wanted to move back home and, and be able to, to enjoy living in mom and dad's basement for free. And those people are now looking to buy homes and there's going to still be significant demand. The last thing I want to say, because this is the thing that I hear people say all the time, John, I'm worried that if everybody pulls out of the market, we're going to see interest rates drop, or not interest rates, housing prices drop because there's going to be no buyers. Think about that. If there's nobody buying homes, then everybody's renting and the rents are going to continue going up. So now is a great time to buy a home so you're not beholden to your landlord. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your trust. Please reach out with any questions. Please like and share this. Subscribe. Join me next week. I've got another Financial Friday coming up next week. Uh, my Financial Friday next week is going to pop up here on the screen. Uh, and it is on what is a reverse mortgage and is it a good idea? I think reverse mortgages are critical to uh, a senior's ability to maintain their their stability in their income for a lot of people. And there's a lot of misunderstandings out there. So allow me to help you guys understand what a reverse mortgage is and how it works. Join me next Friday at 12 noon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you have an absolutely amazing weekend and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.